Hi everyone, Tasha Danielle here. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Let me tell you all about how I decided to quit my job and travel the world for a year. A little bit about me, I am a 36 year old woman who is very curious and adventure, adventurous by nature. And this journey took me overall 11 years to accomplish this. From when the seed was first planted to when I actually stepped out on faith and did it so in short i decided to do this because i wanted to experience something new i felt very stuck for several years in my home in metro detroit i just felt like i was just doing the same thing i love to travel go on several vacations a year some years i'll go somewhere every month to visit friends who moved out of state but it just wasn't enough i just didn't feel something was missing that was one part of it the other part of it is i'm ready to like really live up to my full potential and while i don't know what that is yet it's de i definitely wasn't going to get there doing the same thing that i have been doing for the last few years so aside from me working my corporate job as a cpa i have two businesses one is a youth financial literacy company and the other one is where i manage rental properties that i have so i always had something going on outside of my nine to five just to give you a little background now let me dig into how this started in 2011 and how i got here in 2022 for people who have a short attention span that's the synopsis i just gave you <laughs> 11 years wanted something new um and i forgot to say that I am looking for a place to reside outside the US. That is something that came to me the last couple years. Let me dig into all the details starting in 2011. I swear this won't be 20 hours y'all. So what happened in 2011? Well, I decided to end an engagement and that led me to start traveling like how I never did before. I had went a few places before this, but I just really need to be around my friends. And at this, this time, a lot of them have started moving out of state. So I went to go visit my best friend, Natalie, who stays in Orlando, and we were headed to the beach. And one thing about me, I love the beach and I love to look at magazines or read a book. So she's like, oh, have you uh, heard of this book, Eat, Pray, Love? And I'm like, I think I have. Didn't a movie just come out about it? And she was like, yeah, I feel like that is something that you should read or that I just feel like that's you. And if you don't know what Eat, Pray, Love is, it is a, a book about a woman who divorces her husband because she just felt like she didn't want to live a routine life. She wasn't fulfilled. She wasn't living up to her full potential. And so she decided to spend, take a year, I think, and travel to India, Bali, and I can't remember the other place, but three places. Everyone thought she was crazy. And I never read the book, but I watched the movie several times. The first time I watched the movie, I thought it was just stupid. It was just slow, but even though I didn't like it, I kept watching it. The reason why I kept watching it is because it resonated with me that she, I think, I don't know if her name was Liz. We just gonna call her Liz. Um, she didn't want to live the standard life of just be married and have kids. She actually was married. Her, her husband was ready to have kids, but she was like, she just really didn't want this life and she didn't know how she ended up, ended up married and she just was like, this is not the life that I want. And so she quit everything. She was a writer. Um, she can write from anywhere, but she decided to just go into the unknown. That is why I kept watching the movie over and over again. It, I don't know, still to this day, I don't really enjoy the movie, but I will watch it just because of that messaging that resonates with me that I'm like, I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I just, I don't feel like for me, it's, once you get married and have kids, you're gonna live happily ever after. Um, I didn't know that then, but that's why I kept watching the movie. So that's one. So then fast forward to a few years later, a friend of mine, Heather, she decided to go to Paris or Ireland. I can't remember which one first, uh, but she did this solo. She booked a trip with a solo group and she traveled from Michigan to overseas and I'm like oh my god at that point I had traveled to Jamaica um but I had always wanted to go to South Africa and so I'm like girl 
why are you going to meet up with some strangers from the internet? Like, that sounds like a deadline mystery. This is me projecting my fears onto her. First time she went, she was like, no, people do it all the time. I'm like, okay, whatever. Now, she is white, and so I was like, that's some white people stuff. Ain't no black person wants to go by themselves, travel the world. Just being ignorant. And honestly, a lot of people still say that about me right now. They always tell me I'm doing some non-black people stuff. So, um, and she, I told her that. And she was like, no, black people do it too. And so when she came back, I was like, oh, she, she survived. She went again. And I'm like, oh my God, okay. So she's really doing this. If she can go to see places that she's always wanted to by herself and not wait for nobody, it's time for me to do it too. Now, the company that she went with, um, I want to say it was Kentucky, and it just didn't look diverse enough for me. Like, it wasn't enough black people to be straight, honest with you. I can do mixed groups, clearly. I <laughs> I grew up in a, well, not clearly, you don't know me, but I grew up in an area that was, I grew up in Taylor, Michigan, and it's like mixed black and white students, went to Albion College. Like, I can do mixed groups, but when you are traveling, you definitely want to be you want to experience things with people who get you culturally and you don't have to explain stuff like why my, my edge is not laid, why my hair is frizzy, or why you just don't feel comfortable. Like, you can just do a look with someone and then get it. That is why I wanted to make sure I was with, I saw black people. And I didn't see them in the pictures and I asked her and she said it really wasn't a lot in her group, but you can. So I went on a hunt for a company for solo black travelers and that's how I found Travel Noir. And I traveled to South Africa in 2016 with that company. 2016 was a very pivotal year for me. My grandmother passed away and I grieved her loss by traveling. Now I already had booked and paid for this trip prior to her passing away. And we both were excited for this opportunity for me. She was nervous, like why you're going to go to Africa by yourself. But yeah, I remember in February 2016 when I paid for everything and was telling her about it. And I went in September 2016. During that trip, I met so many amazing women like-minded from the Bay Area, from Chicago, from all over the U.S. who all said they were, this was a life goal of theirs to go to South Africa and they were not waiting on anybody else to do it. Now, here are some pictures from this trip in September 2016. I really had like the time of my life there, y'all. And then while we were hiking, I met a woman who was traveling by herself. Like, not with a tra travel group by herself, but she was truly by herself. Now, the first couple of days in South Africa, I really was by myself. A friend of a friend connected me with a driver there. So I had some person that I knew that was uh, that drove me around, introduced me to his friends. But I knew after a couple of days, I was gonna be with a travel group. So I traveled there from the States to South Africa by myself, but I wasn't gonna be alone the whole trip. So, after um, we go hiking and stuff, I met, like I said, she was traveling by herself, and she was like, she was backpacking, and I'm like, where are you staying? She was staying like hostels or just, you know, hotels. I'm like, hostels, didn't know what a hostel was. Now, a hostel is a, it's, think of a, like a college dorm room. You can either have your private room by yourself and share a bathroom or private room with a bathroom, or you can share a regular bedroom with other people from up to three other people up to like 17 other people there are some hostels that have 18 people in a room so i'm like this sounds crazy you about to be sleeping you sleep in the room with strangers like it just i was like this is insane but i was just like dang she really out here traveling south africa and she was going throughout africa and she was in other places she was going and i'm like wow this is something that I really think I want to do. That's how that seed got planted. Cause I saw it, heard someone's story and I'm like, okay, if she can do it, I can do it. So I mentioned in 2016, my grandmother passed away and I grieved by traveling. And 2017 was when I actually got still. And I like, I feel like I had like a, a mini mental breakdown, just being exhausted, working through grief. Like I worked nonstop. Some of the things I look back on what I accomplished that year, I don't know how I did it. And I needed to just take a break. And I did, I really just, like I was so stressed out. Like I literally just couldn't get out of bed for several days. Like I remember a friend of mine, she had came over to my place. I had stayed downtown Detroit. So a lot of people always popped up whenever. 
And she was like, Tasha, what you been doing all day? I'm like, nothing. She came over the next day, nothing. She was like, okay, literally, you don't know how to do anything. And I just shut down. The only thing that I did was walk around my my place, like my uh, where my apartment building was downtown. Went to the river walk every day because the water soothes me. And I went to the cemetery every day. And I would go to the river walk and I would pray and just like try to ask for guidance on like where I need to be in my life. And then it literally just hit me. And I think this was God speaking to me about traveling the world. And I just started writing in a journal and it was like 614 2020. 614 is my birthday. It's very significant to me. Everybody know I like treat my birthday like a national holiday. And I'm like, my God, I don't know how this is gonna happen because my money is not ready for me to move out the country. Well, not move, but just quit my job and travel for a year. Like, no. Now, I did pay off all my debt, like I said, in 2016. Well, I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but I paid off all my student loan debt. Uh, I didn't have a lot of credit card debt. The credit card debt I had was because of being a person paying for themselves through school, but I was completely debt free. So I'm like, God, I don't, yeah, I don't have any debt anymore. I do have some savings and I have my investments and everything, but oof, I'm a CPA. So I plan and I want certain things a certain way. And I'm like, my money would have to be at like, hundreds of thousands for me to feel safe quitting my job because I feel like so many black families tell people once they get a good job meaning a six-figure job or hell a 70 or 80k job they're like don't lose that good job so that was just indoctrinating in my brain like don't lose this good job don't quit so I'm like I'm gonna walk away from a six-figure job to go travel that's just insane i don't see it i don't see it but not welcome my faith i am a christian for those who um are watching who i mean who hasn't realized that um where i haven't said it so how would you realize that but i am a christian so i'm like um god <laughs> that day has to be wrong it was 2017 but i'm like i don't see how in this many even though it, it was going to be three years from then i'm like i still don't see how i would be able to do it the idea of quitting my job alone just was insane to me and I had a business at this time, but I didn't have any real estate. And I'm like, uh-uh, like I could not see that. Like every other Thursday I get my paycheck. And you're telling me to walk away from that? I'm a um, top performer in my company, so I could never see myself getting fired, which you can always get fired. But yeah, it was just something hard for me to try to understand or for it to resonate with me. So, sorry, I had to pick something up. Um, I'm in this area recording, so people are coming but um yeah i had to really it really had to sit with me for a while and so i went to the river walk i said all 2017 and 2017 um was also the year i bought my first uh real estate property shout out to my friend rochelle who really changed my mindset on that i'm gonna do a video on that um as well but 2017 was the year that god told me to you know, quit my job and be prepared to travel the world. Now, I need a lot of mental, like, mental mindset shift for that to happen. And so, what did I do to get there? I got on Google and literally typed in uh, how to quit your job and travel. Then I put in, like, how, I mean, black women traveling the world, like, I kept changing in search results. And then a company came up that I was familiar with and they had a webinar. And it was about a woman who quit her job, something I was looking to do. She was a black woman who quit her job and she was traveling the world. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is it. I signed up for this webinar, I listened to a half hour of it. And it was just a sales pitch, which most webinars are, get you hyped up. And then at the end, it's like, okay, by the way, if you really wanna know how to do it, pay $3,000, I'm like, so I always listen to you share how you felt before you left, but she didn't even share like wh where she went. It was just all about basically what I, a little bit of what I'm telling y'all now, like how she got there. This on YouTube for free. Like, I'm like, okay, so I wasted 30 minutes of my life and y'all advertised it like she was really going to give the gems. So I was really pissed off. So then I'm like, you know what, let me get on YouTube and see if I can find something myself since that was just a webinar and I got played. And I found Stephanie Perry's channel. And Stephanie Perry 
is she's huge now on YouTube. But back then, I don't even think Stephanie had like 100 subscribers, right? And this was in 2018. So 2017, like I said, God told me 614-2020 is your move. This was before I even bought my first house. I ended up buying a house in 2017, but this was before then. So I'm like, I don't even got no passive income. Like, that's not going to work. I don't even... I don't even understand. Oh, I forgot a key thing. In 2017, I interviewed for Google for four months. Flew, I got flewed out to headquarters twice, y'all, and got rejected. I was so mad. So I felt like, oh, this was my chance to leave Michigan. I was born in California. Maybe it's time for me to come full circle. One of my dearest friends lived in California. So I'm like, oh, this is going to work. And it didn't happen. So you later that the grief me feeling like i was about to get a fresh start in summer of 2017 i just literally just collapsed and this is what was happening like i said before like i just had no motivation i literally i was off work for a minute because i literally could not get out of bed like depressed y'all so anyway let's get back to uh the the webinar and all this stuff so at this point, I'm doing a webinar. This is in 2018. I'm settled into my multi family. I'm living upstairs right now at the downstairs apartment. And webinar played me, find Stephanie Perry. And she's talking about how she travels. She traveled. She took a year off work with $30,000 to travel. And she just made it work. And she talked about staying at hostels. And then she said she came up on house sitting. And that was just the start of her channel. And this is in 2018, y'all. I listened to her. Every time she dropped a video when I was working, when I was working out, whatever, I would let her stories play in my head. Then I started, once I found her, I started looking for other um, people who were doing this, like who traveled the world, maybe it was house sitting or something else. But I didn't think I was gonna really do house sitting and I'm not doing that now. Uh, but it was just, every day hearing someone do what I want to do literally changed my life and that's how I paid off my debt as well I listen to podcasts every freaking day because not every no nobody around me had that mindset of being debt free at the time that I did it also now um in 2017 2018 nobody around me was talking about for real taking the steps to quit their job and travel it was always like this idea that could or this thought that could never dream I should say that could never be reached and if something sit with me for a while and I'm thinking about it constantly, I'm like, I need to take action on it. So years of me listening to it, and then it finally happened. But that's the backstory on why, or like I guess the seeds that got planted on why I decided to quit my job and travel for the year. Hopefully that made sense. I know I went from, you know, Eat, Pray, Love to South Africa to webinars and getting played, um, trying to get thousands of dollars um, for something that I found on free for YouTube. But I do see value in it now, honestly, in hindsight, because you you may hear how to do it, but it, take, it took me years of different people's story to figure out exactly how to do this, right? So if I would've paid for the course, I could've saved myself some time. I do get that. But I was so mad because I'm like, if y'all would've just told me in the beginning, I would've knew I would have to pay for something, I would have mentally even prepared, but then I I felt played. I still feel a little played, y'all. <laughs> but what you can expect on what you can expect on this channel, because this is my first video, is me just laying out financially how I prepared to do this, where I started, where I started in Europe, uh, and just so much more. But I really wanted to like lay that foundation uh, on why, like what what really what have I gone through that made me want to do this. Uh, until next time, I am signing off and I will see you on the next one.